east of the Singapore River, was originally home to rich Europeans. It's now become the traditional home of Singapore's Indian community, the third largest ethnic group on the island. As well as the Hindu temples, there's one building with a secret you can bank on. It's easy to miss. After all, nothing about number one Tank Street seems remarkable until you discover the secret hiding within. This is Singapore's last Ketangi. A unique kind of bank. If you think it looks small scale, think again. Because it was once part of a banking network worth $40 billion. Basically, this is where they do the business. Everything is seated on the floor. This space is considered one business. In fact, it's called a box space. And a business is actually called a box because based on this. When you say, well, how's your business, how's your box? <laughs> These boxes belong to the Chettiers, a devout caste of Hindu moneylenders from southern India. And for many would-be entrepreneurs in Singapore, what was inside the Chettiers' box represented their best hope of securing credit. If you wanted to borrow money from a British bank, okay, you would have to be someone of some status. You would have to know how to speak English. You must know how to sign or write something. You must wear a coat and tie the attire. The whole process was very intimidating. During the colonial period, no British-owned bank is about to give a loan to a young Chinese immigrant with no collateral, no matter how big his dreams might be. In the case of a chetia, all he had to do is walk in and just sit down on the floor. And uh, usually the chetias didn't wear shirts, whereas the borrower would probably be wearing a shirt. So uh, it might look to him that he's wealthier than the Chetia. Living and working in the same humble surroundings, the Chetiers provided a different kind of banking experience to the Europeans. And the process is very simple. You can speak in broken Malay, you can say what you need, and the Chetia will go take the trouble to visit your business, your family, understand your circumstances, and then he can tailor the loan exactly to your needs. In 1904, one particular Chinese immigrant plucks up the courage and enters the world of the Chetiers. When he first came to Singapore, he started as an apprentice in his family's rice distribution business. But now, he wants to strike out on his own. To realize his ambitions, he needs a startup loan from Singapore's equivalent of an angel investor. With an initial $7,000 advance, he's able to buy his own pineapple processing plant. It's his first step towards a multi-million dollar fortune and a business empire that stretches across five continents. His name is Tan Ka Ki, and he'll come to be called the Henry Ford of Asia. Sabaya's father ran the family business started by his grandfather, and it was by investing in people like Tan Ka Ki that the Chetiers powered Singapore's economy throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. But by the 1970s, modern banking methods replaced the Chetier way of business. And now all that remains is this one empty Ketangi. But without the Chetiers, Singapore wouldn't have become the financial capital it is today. The Chetias, you know, religion and business were very much intertwined. It was like the Protestant work ethic. You work hard, you live a very simple life, and the more prosperous your business is, you know, God is blessing you more. So wherever they went, one of the first things they did was build a temple. 